All right, this week we continue our leadership lessons from the Bible. This week, talking about fear versus faith. Fear versus faith. And I want to bring you to the book of Luke, chapter 12. And in verse 22, this is a story where Jesus tells his disciples not to worry. He said, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body. Don't worry about what you'll wear. Life is more than food. Life is more than the body and the clothes. Consider the ravens. Consider these birds that are out here trying to take my lunch, <laughs> climb up onto the, the table here at this food court that I'm sitting at. Consider the ravens. They don't sow. They don't reap. They don't have a storeroom or a barn to, to hold their grain. Like They don't have a bank that they store these things in. But God feeds them every single day, every single meal. Can you imagine that? All the animals that live in nature, he provides for them every single day, every single meal. Yet we as humans, our natural tendency is to worry and to fret. You know, I remember being on mission in Uganda when I was in my 20s. And we were in this beautiful village. And the villagers there, um, they were living in huts probably the size of the average bathroom not master bathroom in America, but the average, you know, a kid's bathroom, let's just say, in a home in America. And there, there would be a family of five living in a hut made of mud and wood and stones from the ground that they put together just to put a basic shelter over the home. And you know what? The people that I met there were so much sometimes more joyful than the people living in the United States where we have so many resources. You know, just remember that being here, we have so much to be grateful for. Did you know that the average person, 97% of the world lives on less than $3 a day? 97% of the world. So do not worry and God will feed you because God feeds the ravens and how much more valuable chapter uh, the book of Luke says how much more valuable are you than the birds right God made humans more powerful and valuable than birds he gave us the ability to to think to feel to build relationships to build buildings to build shelter he gave us all these resources so how much more valuable are we than the birds who are you by worrying can add a single hour to your life is worrying productive right now? I understand I've been in that place many times in my life and I'm not saying that I don't work. Trust me, sometimes I do, right? But I just have to remember, I can choose fear or I can choose faith. I can choose faith. I was watching the Green Lantern, which is a really uh, fun action hero movie if you haven't seen it yet. And in the movie, the trainer that's training Ryan Reynolds, who is the Green Lantern superhero, he says, fear is the opposite of will, right? Fear is the opposite of will or faith in our case. And he said, uh, you know, faith and will is the, is the ability to take action. Write this down. Motion creates positive emotion. Motion creates positive emotion. God does want, not want us to sit in fear, in paralysis, in hiding in the corner. He wants us to live by faith, to take action, to open the doors, to plant the seeds. He, he wants us to take action. And being in action, motion, as Tony Robbins says, creates positive emotion. When we're in motion, just think about it. Maybe you're having a a bad day, but you get up and you go work out, you start working out. And, you know, at first you don't feel like working out. And I've been there many times before too, but you put on the sneakers, you go outside, you start taking the walk and the blood starts pumping. And all of a sudden the endorphins start kicking in and you feel better. Your mind starts to clear. And as soon as I get home from a walk, usually I'm ready to make calls. Usually about three quarters through my walk, 
I start taking out the phone and I start returning phone calls. I start being able to respond to people who are trying to reach out to me, even when sometimes I feel so overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, you know, so much is coming at me all at once. But then after I've gotten in motion, I'm able to start handling the things that I need to handle that day, facing the challenges that I have to face for that day. God does not want us to sit and not do anything. He wants us to take action. Faith is taking action, the opposite of fear. You know what? You can't think about faith and you can't think about fear in the same moment. They are opposites of each other. Emerson said, do the thing and then you'll have the power. Do the thing and then you'll have the power. What he meant by that was you can't wait until you feel motivated in order to take action. Now, a lot of us do that, right? We're like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything today. So I'm just going to sit, and lay in my bed until I feel better. And then I'll start taking action. But the challenge is there's this thing called the law of congruence. Write this down. The law of congruence by Brennan Burchard says when you're doing what you want to be doing, it leads to happiness. And when you're not doing what you know you should be doing, it leads to self-loathing. When you're not doing what you know you should be doing, it leads to self-loathing. I mean, I do it all the time. I think about, oh my gosh, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I should be getting this done. I should be calling this person. Oh my goodness, I got to get this project done. And I should all over myself. We got to stop shitting all over ourselves. Don't say I should. Instead, take action. Because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to move forward in faith instead of stay paralyzed in fear. And so what can we take action with? What are we waiting for right now in our lives? Is it someone that we need to reconcile a relationship with? Is it saying, you know what, I'm going to go all out in my business and I'm going to make a full hour's worth of phone calls in order to do some prospecting, or I'm going to make a full day that are yet, I'm going to do eight hours worth of work in a day. And I know that sounds crazy for people listening in because some people say, well, of course I have to work eight hours in a day, but entrepreneurs, I'm talking to you. I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years and I know when you make your own schedule, right? Being an entrepreneur, it's easy to kind of like not want to put in a full work day. But the magic happens when you do it because then you're in congruence. You're heading towards your goal. You feel good because you're making the calls that you know that you should be making that you want to be doing. You're opening doors. You're starting to meet new people. New promises are starting to come as a result of taking action. And we feel better about ourselves. And we are moving in the right direction. Because every day it's a slight edge. Every day we have a choice to move positively in the direction we want to be going in or negatively in the opposite direction. So every day is a choice. And a good mentor of mine, David Bird, he used to say, these three things sometimes make or break our success. Number one is our attitude. Every day we have a choice to have a positive attitude towards something that happens or a negative attitude towards something that happens. And you know, that, that happened to me the other day. I had three things that happened in one day that I could start to see my blood pressure boil. <laughs> I could start to feel it boiling up. And I started I, I just had to remind myself that every day is a choice. And so I hear David Bird's voice in my head and I'm like, I have a choice to be positive about this. So I have a choice to sit here and be negative about it. And, and spending too much time in negativity is only going to ruin my day more, elongate the ruining of my day. And as soon as I can choose that positive attitude towards things, um, instead of getting frustrated, frustrated, I just decided to be fascinated. It's fascinating. It's fascinating that my son just exploded a slime ball all over the couch and there's pink, neon pink all over the couch. You know, it's fascinating. It's fascinating that 
you know, this person is late, which is making everything else on the whole day of the plans late. It's that's fascinating instead of frustrating. So we have a choice every day. And that positive attitude, making that choice makes or breaks us when it comes to living a successful and happy life. The second choice is our daily actions. We can either have a choice to take action towards our goal every single day, or we can take the choice to do nothing. And it feels like, well, if I do nothing, nothing really changed. Nothing happened when I did nothing. But over time, the slight edge and the compound effect, more days of doing nothing versus less days of doing something, compact, compound in the opposite or the downward result. However, if we're taking choices more than not, because I'm not saying you have to be perfect every day, and a lot of the times I am not, okay? But I feel that I have taken more choices to take action on the days that I didn't feel like doing it more than on the days that I didn't. And as a result, those days of positive action has compounded and produced a result. And then the third thing that makes or breaks us when it comes to being successful and living a happy life is our willingness to be held accountable. Who is holding you accountable to your goal right now? Ask somebody to hold you accountable. Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to not eat the chocolate cake this Thanksgiving dinner because it adds an extra five pounds? I'm guilty of the pizza all the time, every time that there's pizza, but my husband's been holding me accountable. So when he sees me reaching for the pizza, he goes, don't you, I know you want to eat the salad. I know you want to eat the salad. I know you're going to regret eating the pizza because you always do. And then I have to hear about it and you complain about it. <laughs> and so who's holding you accountable to your goal? Because the willingness to be held accountable and hear me, I have been I have been unwilling to be held accountable many times in my career. And as a result, I didn't grow because I just wanted to sit in depression on my couch and watch another show of Netflix, right? With my cozy little blanket, instead of get up and get moving in the direction that would make me feel more congruent with who I am and where I wanna go and where I wanna be. Because in life, we're either growing or we're dying. Tony Robbins says progress equals happiness. And when we feel like we're progressing in the direction of where we want to go, that brings joy. It doesn't mean that you have to accumulate a lot. It doesn't mean that you have to have millions of dollars in the bank account. It just means that, you, that we are better. We are a better person today than we were yesterday. So in closing, in the book of Luke, um, still on chapter 12, in verse 26, he says, since you cannot do this very little, little thing, then why do you worry about the rest? Why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor to grow. The, the grass, the flowers, they just grow. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon, King Solomon, and all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God closes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow was thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, and do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after such things, possessions, worrying about earthly possessions, and your father knows that you need them, but seek his kingdom first and these things will be given to you as well. I love you guys. It's been another fantastic week. We'll see you next time.